Oh, hello, looking for free webcam games of Commander? Well, the Tolarian Community College Discord's Looking for Games section is 100% free, so you can shuffle up and play in a cool, fun space for those looking for webcam games of Commander or any Magic the Gathering format for that matter. Just go to discord.gg forward slash Tolarian Community College. It's free! <laughs> oh, hello. You know, those Thunder Junction Commander Precons really were disappointing, weren't they? You know, the Commander Precon has been one of my favorite products since it was first created, but with so many of them getting to be so much more than $45 each and now some of them just turning into straight up duds, I figure, why don't we just build our own Commander Precons for $45? So that's what we've done. We've actually done it several times before, but today, this may be our most powerful build your own precon yet. So take notes and also take note of that. As of the filming of this video, you can still put it together for only about $45. Presenting Indominus Dollar Domination, an imposing, powerful, yet simple to pilot Voltron deck led by Jurassic World crossover legend, Indominus Rex Alpha. Aw, oh, baby, Jurassic World. Everyone's favorite, totally necessary and totally memorable sequel trilogy. Ha, ha, ha. But despite your opinions on that franchise, this commander is actually sickeningly powerful. Costing one generic, two hybrid Demir, and two green mana, Indominus Rex Alpha is a 6-6 legendary dinosaur mutant that states, as Indominus Rex Alpha enters the battlefield, discard any number of creature cards. It enters with a flying counter on it if a card discarded this way has flying. The same is true for First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Haste, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, and Vigilance. Not horsemanship, apparently. But when Indominus Rex enters the battlefield, draw a card for each counter on it. The goal of this deck is to extract as much value out of casting our commander as possible. To accomplish this, we'll be feeding her a glorious keyword soup of creature cards to consume and discard. Indominus Rex not only reliably enters with evasion and protection keyword counters, allowing her to dominate combat, she also refills our hand and pours reanimation targets into our graveyard, all in one single motion. Through the power of drawing too many cards, a little graveyard recursion, and a stubborn, brutish source of commander damage, just like objects in Mirror, a victory may be closer than it appears. So buckle up tight and hop into that Jeep Wrangler Sahara as I teach you how to construct this mutant monstrosity of a deck for only $45 as of the time of filming. For those with a little extra spending cash or who just want to pursue the brew further, be sure to stay tuned at the end for an upgrade guide that brings the deck to $100 total. So where do we begin with this deck? With Keyword Soup, of course. Let's take a look. Though our game plan engages with a handful of sub-themes, I want to dive into the most essential first. Keyword soup. Without question, the bread and butter of this precon is soup. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. But it will make an absolute feast for Indominus Rex of keyword-laden creature spells. More keywords, the better, which is why we've ended up dedicating an entire tenth of this deck just to creatures with three keywords, the highest combination possible in our color identity. So take a look at Wilson Refined Grizzly, Gurmag Swiftwing, Vampire Nighthawk, and Nighthawk Scavenger, because they not only contain three keywords each, yielding a minimum of three cards drawn with Indominus Rex, but get this, each of them also cost under 60 cents a pop. But wait, there's more because the same is true for Vengeful Reaper. Remove new map Hydra, Miri the Cursed, and Venomthrope. Not bad for being essential to our game plan and often the most efficient cards in the entire deck. While Nighthawk and Miri might be okay in combat, the harsh truth behind all eight of these creatures is that they exist solely to feed Indominus Rex. A combination of discarding Wilson and Gurmag Swiftwing alone means we're drawing six cards when she enters. The same for discarding 
discarding just a Vengeful Reaper and Remunap Hydra. Six keywords for two discards is our best rate possible. But we have a few more creatures with three keywords which deserve a spotlight, as the two most worth casting rather than feeding to Indominus. Endray's Forerunners and Questing Beast. Endray's Forerunners gets a shout out as a bona fide win condition, giving our mutant dinosaur and other evasive beaters plus two plus two, vigilance, and trample for a late game knockout. Questing Beast speaks for itself as the only card in our deck worth over $5. It is truly the finest battlefield lieutenant that we could ever ask for with that subtle, powerful line of text. Combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. Oh, were you planning on casting that Fog or Ink Shield in response to my lethal commander damage? Better think again with Questing Beast in play. I will admit, a whole one-tenth of the deck being just creatures with three keywords may seem excessive, but the guaranteed value with Indominus Rex is too good to pass up. Again, discarding just two of these creatures can let us draw up to six cards. That's ridiculous! With such a lucrative exchange of resources at our fingertips, the excessive supply starts to make a lot more sense. So with that being said, let's take a look at the next best option in our keyword soup. Creatures with two keywords. They couldn't possibly take up another one-tenth of our deck, or could they? But of course they could. In fact, a whopping one-fifth of this deck is dedicated to creatures with two keywords. That's 20 creature cards total. While we obviously won't go over each and every one, there are some that absolutely should be considered signpost creatures of this precon. Glissa Sunslayer, Leyline Prowler, Gem Razor, Rankle Master of Pranks, and Dire Fleet Ravager all achieve something tremendous by having efficiency beyond being just discard fodder for Indominus Rex. Sure, we we could discard a Glissa for a brutal combination of First Strike and Death Touch counters, or we can simply cast her on turn three, giving ourselves an awesome, repeatable source of card draw and enchantment removal. Leyline Prowler's lifelink makes for a decent dino snack, but running double duty as a traditional on-curve ramp spell could lead to casting the alpha full turn sooner than normal. Gem Razor's mutation is pivotal as artifact and enchantment removal, allowing us to liberate Indominus Rex should our opponents inevitably enchant her into a tree, or an elk, or a bug, or put her in a moon. Rankle is one of our rare sources of haste, so while we'll discard him often, his merit on board as an evasive attacker and repeatable card draw can't go unsung. Trust me, it's a good thing he lets our opponents draw cards, as this will soften their ire when we inevitably hit them in the face with a 6-6 flying death touch menace lifelink indestructible haste vigilance commander, or when we commit other equally violent game actions, like cutting their life in thirds with Dire Fleet Ravager. While the greatest strength of the aforementioned creatures is their usefulness beyond granting keywords, there are certain others shameless in their role as fresh meat for our commander, and nothing more. Basara, Tower Archer, Kefnet the Mindful, and Sagu Mahler are all creatures that we will be discarding with extreme prejudice to Indominus Rex 99.9% .9 of the time, as are classics like Silumgar the Drifting Death and Stonehoof Chief. Why? Two simple words, hexproof and indestructible. These game warping abilities mean our commander can neither be targeted by our opponents nor destroyed. And you thought commanders with Ward 3 were bad. I want to make one thing very clear to anyone looking to pilot this precon. Indominus Rex Alpha will terrify your opponents. Even if you haven't attacked a single time, I guarantee you, someone will still speed target of removal on her based on intimidation and psychic damage alone. Trust me when I say, if a creature in your hand is either hexproof or indestructible, it must be prioritized as a dinosaur food above all else. But now we need to move on from keyword soup. Even though our deck has 40 creatures total contributing keywords, we have not one but two other major sub-themes to cover. And next up is the always enticing Reanimator sub-theme. And that's on flavor, because you know the Jurassic Park movies? Dinosaurs were brought back to life? That's reanimation, baby. Let's talk reanimation. 
Rescue from the Underworld and Ever After are both available on an extreme budget and get the job done. Ever After is able to get us two creatures back from the grave, in fact, zombifying them in the process. Rescue from the Underworld plays a unique role as not only a reanimation spell, but a rare method of triggering Indominus Rex's ability a second time. As an additional cost to cast Rescue from the Underworld, we can sacrifice Indominus Rex, then return both it and target creature in our graveyard to the battlefield on our next upkeep. Rescue from the Underworld is a great card that feels underplayed in general. And did I mention it's an instant? Our reanimation package continues with two creatures, Archpriest of Shadows and Terror of Tawashi. Both are touting the often relevant death touch keyword, and both give us opportunities to reanimate via combat. Archpriest of Shadows can reanimate when either she or the creature she backs up deals combat damage to a player. Terror of Tawashi doesn't have to make direct contact like Archpriest, as its attack trigger allows us to pay four mana to bring something back before blockers and damage calculation. Lastly, I must highlight what I consider to be the perfect all-star budget reanimation spell, Command the Dread Horde. For four generic and two black mana, Command the Dread Horde states, choose any number of target creature and or planeswalker cards in graveyards. Command the Dread Horde deals damage to you equal to the total mana value of those cards. Put them onto the battlefield under your control. We have just enough lifelink keywords to get dangerously green greedy with this spell. Don't hesitate to spend upwards of 10, 15, or even 20 life to flood our board with every discarded creature in Dominus Rex devoured, as well as the best creatures in our opponent's yards, because why not? Life is a resource, and those life totals must go down eventually, so let's do it on our own terms. Don't forget, if our commander happens to die to a toxic deluge, we can also save our reanimation spells to get her back from the grave, effectively dodging commander tax. I guess it's true what Goldblum says when life, uh, finds a way. There's another sub-theme within this precon, and that is Voltron. While Indominus Rex is an always intimidating maelstrom of keywords, she does have one major shortcoming as a Voltron commander. None of those keywords increase her combat damage output, meaning we'll need to hit an opponent four times to knock them out with commander damage. One might naturally consider Double Strike a solution, but now is the time to share the harsh truth that there isn't a single creature in the Sultai color identity that natively has Double Strike. Seriously, not not a single one, so we can't rely on double strike counters. If we want to increase our commander damage, we'll need to be clever girls. And so I look towards Evolutionary Escalation, an underplayed gem that states at the beginning of your upkeep, put three plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, and three plus one plus one counters on target creature and opponent controls. While one may balk at the thought of buffing our opponent's creatures, I'm extremely confident in our ability to always come out ahead due to the pure lethality of Dominus Rex. And we always pick the opponent who gains the least from getting three plus one plus one counters anyway. Equipment of choice includes Luxodon Warhammer and Luxier Giada's Gift. Luxodon Warhammer is a tried and true commander staple. Plus three power is nothing to scoff at, and a strong combination of keywords greatly complements our strategy. Luxier is one of the deck's splurges at over three dollars, but I'd say it's worth every penny. The legendary equipment states, equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each counter on it, and the equip cost is three. All right, fine, it says some other stuff about planeswalkers, but none of that matters for our purposes. All we care about is slapping this on Indominus for an instantaneous plus five plus five or greater, depending on how many keyword counters she feasted upon. Finally, we have the nuclear options, exponential growth and choose your weapon. Investing six mana into exponential growth doubles Indominus to 12 power, and then doubles her again to 24. Suddenly, the combo player who thought they were safe this turn because we hadn't stacked any commander damage on them is just another tasty hapless goat. Choose your weapon similarly catches opponents off guard with its mode doubling target creatures power and toughness until end of turn. Unblocked six commander damage becoming 12 at instant speed is just one method to devour a player whole. Yum yum. It is amazing how powerful this deck is for only $45 worth of cards, but what if you want to go further? For those with a little extra cash to spend, we now present our upgrades for the deck as well as what we'd take out to make room for them. 
So what are our upgrades? First, let's talk what we're taking out. Namely, Lanawar Green Widow, Bastion Narada, Loyal Drake, Vampire Nighthawk, Primeval Herald, Mole Drifter, Crag Plate Bailoth, and Ever After. While these cards do play out a good role, they ultimately pale in comparison to the following upgrade swaps, starting with Ronus the Indomitable and Nylea, God of the Hunt. Ronus and Nylea are both sources of indestructibility and egregiously give us direct ways to pump our commander damage with their activated abilities. We're also going to bring in cards like Weathered Sentinels and Elder Gargaroth, which are forces to be reckoned with in combat as two of the best creatures with three keywords ever printed. For an upgraded nuclear option, we turn to Zapandril, Hunger Dominus, which will double the power of our commander and entire board each combat. And we'll want to bring in a Phyrexian Flesh Gorger to round things out as a solid reanimation target with two excellent keywords, plus castable modes for three or seven mana. Speaking of reanimating things, we should bring in Reanimate, the go-to upgrade for any deck with reanimation as the cheapest option. But I'll also suggest bringing in Rise of the Dark Realms to go along Inside it as an even more explosive counterpart. And oh, look, you can finally get one for under $10. Go reprints. Want to see this deck in action? Next Monday, it's the Build Your Own Precon episode of Shuffle Up and Play, where this deck's writer and designer, Bobby Christine Brewer, will be piloting it against Jesse Robkin, the writer and designer of some of our other Build Your Own Precons, as well as the one and only Olivia of Commander at Home, who will build a brand new Build Your Own Precon of her own to show off in the episode. Oh, and as for me, I designed a never-before-seen build-your-own precon to show these young upstarts who the real master precon deck builder is. That episode drops this Monday, so be sure not to miss it. But while you wait, give a watch to last week's Shuffle Up, where Pleasant Kenobi, Joe Johnson, and Lewis Stardust brought level 8 commander decks with them to the table. And remember, if you want to shuffle up and play games of Webcam Commander for free, the Looking for Games section of the Tolarian Community College Discord server is 100% free. Just go to discord.gg forward slash Tolarian Community College. We have a robust, friendly, and well-moderated selection of Webcam Commander, Modern, Popper, and other magic formats. And best of all, it's 100% free. That's discord.gg forward slash Tolarian Community College. Next time on Shuffle Up and Play. We are playing Build Your Own Precon Commander today. Hi, my name is Jesse Robkin. My commander is Raph Weatherlight Stalwart. Hi, everybody. My name is Bobby Christine. I am playing Indominus Rex. Uh, I'm Olivia Gobert Hicks. I am playing Ariette today. My Build Your Own Precon is the master above all. Now I'm going to mill three. Oh. Oh. Garuda! Oh, wow. Garuda! All right, everybody vote. <laughs> everybody <laughs> vote at home. I will put Command the Dreadheart on the stats. Quite a bit of life you're paying oh, in there, gosh. friend. You're going to lose 18 life. I'm yeah! <laughs> Risk it, biscuit. Girl boss behavior. Yes. <laughs>